Welcome to the OSRs podcast where we talk to RuneScape content creators and sometimes even JMods and talk about some RuneScape content. I'm Mitt Mad Cow, one of your hosts, followed by... What's going on boys, Riggs as always? And me, Vice Cup. And today, we are blessed with the very presence of the man, the myth, the legend, the magical Sebi Wu, aka Manked Up Mage. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, mate. I just realized I've got my trophy in the other room. I should have had that oh. for this intro. And I could have <laughs> raised it, you know? But no, oh, I'm doing yeah, good, man. Yeah, yeah. How are you doing, well, man? First, How's life going? Yeah. Life's uh, interesting. I, I, I've hit, like, I feel like midlife crisis part of it, where <laughs> I have decisions to make about my future. Um, but apart from that, you know, same old, playing games, having fun. Yeah, yeah should we do I a feel quick that, recap? Man. Should we do a quick recap uh, about Manked real quick? It's yeah, I was going to say, Manked, if you could um, tell us some of the best things you've done in RuneScape, right? Like, you know, PvP-wise, all, all, all the good stuff there. Your accomplishments, pretty much. Yeah, um, so I play, I've been PKing for like 15 years. I made an account, yeah, 15 years ago. Played it for about a month, and then I overtook my friend's account. He hacked me because he was jealous of my account. And then I made oh. a pure, and I've PKed ever since. Wow. Um, so, uh, my accomplishments would be technically winning Dead Mode twice. The first time my teammate was splashing. Yeah, my teammate was splashing during the week, so he was disqualified. Uh, so I got that win. And the second time, uh, my team Blazers, we took first, second, and third, uh, which was awesome. And then my other, the, the accomplishment I'm most proud of is the All-Stars victory. Uh, so that was 15 content creators. And I ended up winning every single fight. Didn't lose one. And yeah, yeah no, I was super happy with that. Yeah, Rachel was in there. I was so... Mm. I, they, I was really sad I didn't get a fight manked. Like, you know, because they kind of messed up, like, the, the brackets, I think. Because I beat Ditter Bitter in the first three fights. And then I had to fight him in the finals again. Or, mm. like, there were people that I didn't fight, but I had to fight again. So, unfortunately, like, I didn't get the fight against Max. Which was a shame. And also, if I, me and Bitter, we went 2 free in his favor. So if I won, I lost the pure fight. If I won that pure fight, I would have fought against Manx. And ah, oh, that's like my, my biggest regret from that tournament, dude. But like, I fuck it. That was an it was awesome event. Tournament. It I was really, it. really good. And like, it was easy for them to do. It was relatively like DNS and technical issue friendly. Yeah, um, there. <laughs> Oh, Dude. I'd love to. I'd love to. By it the way, so great good. question for the chat. If Manked and Rakesy fought, who would win? I'm calling Manked because, uh, sorry, Rakesy, man. <laughs> I've seen you. You're good. But Dude. Manked, he's, he's got the walk-unders. He's got, oh, my God. He's got the timing nailed down. And you, my friend. Like, Dude, how can you say gen. something so putrid <laughs> as that? You're really going to do this man by saying he's good at walking under? Yo. Are, you, are you calling this man a coward? You can't fight on his fucking feet? I would, Is that what I you're would saying? say... Timing and walking under are the best things for a 1v1. So he would only need timing to defeat you. But if he had to walk under, you would just stand there like, yo, oh, I can't even. I, what's, what's happening? I would get two to it. Yo, this would be a good time. This would be a good time to introduce the, the light goal. You know? Oh, yes. Yeah. So last video, over 400 likes. So Mod Husky said, hey, Raids 3 coming out next month. If not, you know, I'm sorry, boys. We tried. And uh, we have this, uh, main test this kind of rumor going about that if we get a GoFundMe to make enough money for him, he will become a JMod for a year and fix PvP. And, uh, you know, if we hit 400 likes, I think I think Mank's going to have to I go through try. with that, man. <laughs> <laughs> so if you yeah. want to fix PvP and you want Mank to be a JMod, uh, I'm not saying it will happen. I'm just saying it's more likely if we hit 400 likes. Appreciate all the support lately, boys. Channel's blowing up, man. Almost 6K subs. Pretty pog, man. Rakesy. Pretty pog. Come on, Rakesy. Sell out with me, man. I, it, I I right, feel, I, you, you've done it, man. I mean, Mod Husky did say to me in private, he said, look, man, I know that you guys only reached 400 likes. It was a good attempt. And he said, I'll give you another podcast to get to 1,000. So, I mean, if we get 600, it's going to count towards that rate free oh, content. There so, go. yeah, there it is. There Anyways, so... Manx, we've already spoken. You hadn't watched the podcast we did previously because you've been super busy. Hey, no hard feelings. It's okay. Um, it's okay. So we actually discussed a lot in that podcast regarding you becoming a PvP J mod, and um, funnily enough, it was Mod Husky that brought it up, which was cool because obviously they they've seen it and they've heard about it. Um, and I would just like to know like some more information how you feel 
about like if you were to become a jmod what do you think you would bring to the table and um like what's your goals and aspirations if that were to actually to come true and to be honest with you with the runescape community i'd be surprised if you didn't hit that fund me goal that you guys said well, I'd, I'd chip in man and by the way take the question in parts too it's a it's it's a pretty girthy question yeah. my friend yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, well, the whole idea came around because I was streaming and then Sweet Badass came into my chat and said, would you work at Jagex or something? And I said, sure. And then he, he just tweeted, um, asking the question, can we raise 20k to make Manked work at Jagex? Obviously, um, in, well, not obviously, in the past, I've, I've talked to them about potentially working there, but they've always, um, basically requested me to just apply for one of the normal jobs that they have uh, and with my limited coding experience i've always kind of questioned whether i should but uh, that's where that all came from what i would actually what i could offer to the team i think the the main obvious thing is pvp experience right obviously you have chris archie and sween uh, that pk still i think sween probably is the 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 best pk right now there um, but yeah, I think they, they severely lack a lot of PVP knowledge that would, if they think of an idea for the wilderness, they could literally say to me like, yo, what are your thoughts? What are the positives? What are the negatives? I could give them that information and they could bring out kind of balance changes that won't make the wilderness really difficult for PVMers. It, it, it should make it balanced. And I think I watched, uh, Jimmy's video, uh, earlier today, actually, um, and he was basically saying the balance in runescape's kind of gone and i i really agree with that because the like for the last couple of years pvp's not really been thought of i always say to people when they say the pvp is dead um imagine pvm and the only end game content you have is god wars and barrows and let's say maybe zora Imagine yeah. if you just had those three things, would PVM be dead? And of course it would be, right? Like after doing those three things Easily. for so long, like you you don't want you're not going to want to do that. And that's what PV has been. It's it's been completely no updates really for the last seven years. Um, and I if I was working at Jagex, I could really push the idea of you guys have left this area of the game for so long, which is what it was kind of so well known for in the past. You, you need to, you know, give it some form of attention and see where that goes. Because I think they've always hesitated with giving it any form of in time investment. And it's the same with Deadman Mode as well. If they give that any, any proper dev time or any just time to think about it, which I think, uh, talking about Husky, I think he's great for that job. Uh, I think he's really innovative with his ideas. He works hard and he's he's perfect for, for updating Devil Mode. But I just think they need to devote more time into those aspects. And I think I'd be great for that just because I can help them with my knowledge. I know what's broken. I know what is good and what isn't, you know? And I think I've also got very good contacts within the PvP community. I'm not <clears> biased. I, I, I'd play everything by the books. I wouldn't do what a certain you know who would do um and rig stuff so yeah Wait, can I we think... who, who who are you talking to? who are you talking about uh i don't know i think he he rhymed his name rhymed his bed or something yeah oh yeah my Chad. bed i remember that yeah. mm. my bed like okay. Chad i like dude i like that i like that response <laughs> because um i know you haven't watched the podcast but something that husky said which for me was like the biggest takeaway from it was that he said he thought that you would be a fantastic like match for that kind of um position but he said two things would stood out to me one was that there is no such thing as a jmod that would specifically be put onto like one thing in the game apparently a position like that currently doesn't exist and two he said that if you were to get the job um basically your experience with coding would be your biggest ally because he ba he basically put it like this. You could be as knowledgeable as you possibly can be with PvP. You could come up with fantastic ideas that are just absolutely solid. However, if they were to actually implement those into the game and you didn't have coding experience, it would basically mean that you would take up the time of at least like two or three other people who are also working on other projects. Um, and the takeaway that I got from it was that if you actually wanted to go ahead and do that, if you wanted that position, 
the best thing you could do is go into it and be fully qualified, be able to develop, be able to script, be able to like basically make everything for that update, including a draft playthrough, and not take up anyone else's time. And if that were the case, then those updates that you come forward with would probably get pushed through a lot faster. And um, on top of that, he actually gave us an idea of uh, another JMod that came in who had basically in his own time worked on his own projects. And uh, I can't remember exactly what he said it was. I can't think. Oh, I think it was um well, the hard hard TOB or hard nightmare of no, Ashley it was Hammond. um it was Major Arena too. There was one for that. Okay. Oh, and, someone worked on that on their own time. Yeah, which is why I it didn't really, really start out great. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it did. I thought still to that day that might be the most active area in the uh, wild if you just kind of roam. Oh yeah, and in terms of activity, yeah, I guess so. You know, it yeah, brings it to the broader spectrum of the wild, right? It's not like one yeah. hot zone. It's but mm. I, I think going back to my point, that right there was the biggest takeaway for me was the if you realistically wanted to make a really big impact, because if you did get a job at JMod, they wouldn't just have you working on PvP, you'd be working on skilling, be working on PvM. But you could take your own time, as I know you would, as you have as just a content creator and putting stuff together and talking to people. You would effectively have to become like your own personal mod ash and be able to design like everything there. So my question, I know it's a lot of information, but like, how much coding experience do you have? And is it something that you would be willing to like, would be willing to learn if you had to, to get into that? We could just get a GoFundMe to not only hire him as a JMod, but to pay for Hire a dev. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> I mean, to get his all education going. Yeah, hmm. I mean, I've, I've, I've obviously recently over the last week or so, I've been deciding kind of my future. So I have thought about this and I think the whole the whole learning to code then to then apply for jagex i'm not sure whether it's worth the risk because obviously i'm massively like unbelievably uh, in love with pvp and runescape but the risk for me which i don't know if, if it's worth it is i spend the next six months or so learning how to code and then i apply and i get denied or even worse i apply i get the job and then i end up spending like five to ten percent of my time on pvp and the rest of the time they're they're doing the other projects that in yeah. the past they've clearly shown a lot more favor to you know and i i personally i don't think i'd be interested in doing those i i strictly would only want to work on pvp and obviously that's not realistic and it's just how the world goes so um unfortunately yeah, i don't think i i can do it but maybe in the future maybe that position comes up or they ask me to be like a pvp consultant or something um something yeah. like that i mean the I only have, uh, yeah. sorry um, go ahead man you well, go yeah there's there's a jmod position for esports am i wrong right they hired someone to fill in the esports uh, like the head of esports yeah organize it's like a organization logistical right role. Yeah. And I feel like as Manked has won most of the esports at RuneScape, if you think about it, he is the the winner of most of the esport events on RuneScape, right? Even if you include League, there's not like the same winner in Leagues. So if that if you were to fill that position and then on your off time work on PvP, it'd be like two birds with one stone. Yeah. Yeah. Two birds with one stone. So but the but we don't even know what that role is is now like like it's yeah. like a new thing right and then like what are they doing with it still i don't, you know? I don't think like, it, well, i don't think it exists currently i don't think anybody's doing that now um and that was yeah. around the time when you know dead man mode was a thing and so forth um i i can't even remember i think her name was mod rogue and i think she and i don't um, want to be rude she to her spot. because i know she got a lot of uh Black, <laughs> a lot of yeah. uh yeah. yeah a lot of that she, and, she got the um, full just, brunt of anyone disliking pvp yes like and yeah, some much. of it some of it was fair criticism and some of it was way over the line i think that's i feel a lot of it was probably a <clears throat> little bit too out of line you know yeah especially because we don't really under understood what she was responsible for anyways like a lot of it was like under the table you know we didn't know yeah, but, I, yeah, but it's yeah. not surprising, you know. Yeah. If anyone's getting roasted, I mean, it's definitely going to be the esports person. Sadly, right? I not mean, that yeah. it's deserved. Here, not here, deserved. Here's right, just here's just a comparison, real quick. It's like Manked is incredibly passionate about the game. If Manked was to get a job at Jagex, chances are, like he said, he probably wouldn't even be working on PvP for five percent of his time. So it's like Manked would probably put himself in the position that she was in. And he would then be the scapegoat for the community that like PvP. 
and Mank yeah. would basically be getting that backlash. Mm, yeah, so he'd like, be just, getting mitered. <laughs> like that's something to yeah, think about here, right? And that's fucked up. Definitely. Like, I think we definitely. Can but we're going that. off. We're going off a little bit of information though, right? Because we're not so. sure if if Mank would take that position, he could actually make an impact or say he would be more involved. I mean, he literally won two of Dead Memo. That's crazy. I don't think anyone's going to ever win two Dead Memos. That's too wild to expect. Yeah, I just feel like those definitely... multi zones. That's that stuff is so RNG. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh I just I don't God. even know how you did it, bro. So I, I think maybe uh, if he were to apply, esports would be perfect. <clears throat> in my I've, got opinion. A, I've got a point for the for the rogue bit. Um it. and it kind it kind of goes on your your point, Rexy. I think the problem for what happened there was I think she would have given them a lot of potential ideas. Um but they just may not have pursued it. And then in turn, she couldn't say anything because obviously NDA and stuff. And in turn, she just got roasted by the community. So I, I do feel really bad for her because at the end yeah. of the day, like I could have been in that position and the probably the exact same situation would have happened. I could have offered them so many good ideas and then the higher ups were just like, nah, sorry, it's too much of a risk. And then she just got roasted by everyone, you know? So I, I do feel really bad for her because it yeah. was like a, a lose-lose situation. <clears throat> So yeah, I, I have a I have a question then. You, you, I remember some time ago, right? People talk about like the PVP council thing, and it's like it was like a, a community thing, right? It wasn't like an official idea from Jagex, but like how viable would that be? Because obviously, it's not it's not like you have to code or anything, right? Because then you're 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 just like the people that they would rely on the most for feedback, right? Because like, is there even a channel per se where let's say you know someone someone in, in the actual company is like oh okay uh, well, let's do something PVP right do they no. have like a specific group of people that they talk to right because like I feel like at least a channel where there is some sort of like if they need something PVP related insight wise they should just <clears throat> all always go there right kind of I thing. mean th there is Gone. kind of kind of there you, is you can explain it Manx. yeah um, I mean they ha they have a I'll go on a tangent after this but. They have a Discord channel, which is just PvP that you can talk to mods about uh, it, in it. But there's no kind of like proper, yo, next Friday, we've got this idea, we want to talk to you. That would be sick. Um, but they, they they invited a bunch of content creators uh, a couple of years ago to discuss potential PvP changes and the future of Debra mode, uh, which I went to. And I, I think there, there were quite... a few good ideas raised in that and the whole the lms changes were one of those ideas that came from that meeting uh, which were really positive but unfortunately a lot of, a lot of more stuff was raised but then it was never really worked on and mod rock he had to work on the lms changes in his own time and to me if that doesn't scream they're not prioritizing pvp at all I don't know what will, you know, because that was pretty much the only real big change, I think, that actually came it was. from that meeting. Dude, I was uh, I was at the same meeting with you, actually. Um, and to be fair to Mod Rock, considering how... I, I don't think that Mod Rock has any former PvP experience or really is passionate about it, but the fact that he was able to do that and do LMS to how it is right now in his own free time, I think bravo to that man. Like he did a he did a fantastic job considering. But you're right. We we were there for I think we were there for two days. And it yep. wasn't dude, it listen, not every time you go to Jagex, they put you in a nice hotel and like serve you steak every yeah. single night. We were in a fucking boardroom with a whiteboard for like two days. And all we were doing were PvP stuff. And last month standing <sighs> and what's happening to LMS was like probably like an hour out of like easily 10 hours worth of discussing pvp so basically none of it went through aside from that small little part which to be fair has turned out to be probably one of the best in my opinion pvp mini games we have and one of the best pieces of pvp we have uh but i think it's fair to say it's just not enough like it's just no. not enough is it mm -mm. definitely not uh, I just got to say, though, going back to the whole if Manked was a J mod and talking about that, a lot of these J mods, they might not have time for it. But I really think one of the biggest problems, like the backbone of PvP, is that no one PKs on the team. I know Archie did. I'm not going to call him out, but he didn't really go deep wild. He did play some dead man mode, so he didn't really figure out every aspect of PvP that like the whole range of the wilderness. And I feel like if we just have these J mods, if they had the time, 
to go out, PK, try to kill someone with a bulwark, right? Because to get that little frustration or the black D hide in, in max set, whatever set they're PKing in, or feel the danger, or get chased by a clan, or get followed in on, or maced, right? To feel that anger that most people do in the wild, then they'd have some sort of uh, reference point when it comes to taking these ideas from the community. Yeah. Now, I kind of want to ask my boy Minked, not dead man mode yet, but deep wild. I don't know how often you go deep wild, but do you have any ideas to make that either more active or just a better place in RuneScape? Um, okay, first of all, you missed out the uh, Hobgoblin entrance that they haven't changed still, where the Hobgoblins literally are at that middle Dude, entrance. I was it screaming when it day one of that. I was like, why would they put this rev entrance in and then hob and then south? Multi spot lure. How many people got maced? Who knows? Yeah. Who knows, dude? Awful. Yeah, it's it is truly insane. Um, for deep wilderness, I honestly I think we might have discussed this last time. To be fair, um, but I think one of the uh, best ways to help people get into deep wildy PKing at least is to rework the uh the bosses in the wilderness, the wilderness bosses, um, and make it so you don't have to essentially bug abuse the game or glitch the game to kill them. Uh, but instead make it so you have to have full tribrid gear uh, to kill them. And if you do everything perfect, you don't take any damage. And that would promote uh, players to kind of learn how to tribrid uh, if the bosses did different attacks. So they'll melee you a hit, then they'll range you a hit, but they kind of mix it up with special, you know, abilities or whatever. Um, kind of like, I think, yeah, the, the crab... Uh, room in theater of blood i think if they had that in the wilderness and actually made that kind of an interesting fight for wildy bosses that could be really good because i can imagine myself going up there thinking all right i'm gonna kill as many of these things as i uh, callisto as many times as i want uh for the pet and then anyone that tries to come kill me i'm just gonna kill them because i'm yeah. i'm geared because i know one of the biggest complaints that pvmers have is oh, I, I'm not geared to fight back, I can't fight back, they're just picking on me because I'm PVMing and I can't fight back. So I think if you made it, so in order to PVM in the wilderness, you have to kind of have like a PKing setup, it would help both the PVMers uh, <clears throat> get better and then they might enjoy it. Because yeah. I don't, yeah, I, PKing is so enjoyable, man. That, like, that's oh, that's actually, such a good, that's really good point. Very yeah. good point. I, if I may, real quick. So something you touched on there was um, I'm thinking about like a boss with different mechanics that obviously you can make it so it can do fakies. That'd be cool. But like when PVMers be say when when PVMers feel like they're at such a huge disadvantage because they're being attacked. So this is something I I don't think I've ever talked about, but I'm sure Mank you can remember because I know you used to PK back in the day and you were in teams as well. So. Back when you wanted to become, in my day, when you wanted to join a PvP clan, um, you weren't going to get into that clan if you were just good at hybriding, okay? If you were good at hybriding, but you were fucking dog shit when it came to tanking, you weren't getting in. When you applied for a clan, you had to do, like, two tests that I can remember. One was a hybrid test, where you fought against somebody who was half decent, and you had to show if you could beat him or hold your own. And the other one was a tank test. And if you couldn't tank a full TB without fighting back, you didn't even get into the clan, okay? That's how it worked. It's like, if you expect to just tank a TB by praying mage with your bulwark on the entire time, and then you get angry when you die like that, you're not fucking trying. You gotta be able to, like, predict and read what the opponent who's attacking you is gonna do. If you're not fighting back, you're already a, like, you're an attack dummy. It's like, you can do things to avoid and neglect taking damage. There is truly an art of skill to tank in, in itself and i feel like that's probably something that's not spoken about much but it's also something which is not included in the rest of the game like there are very few bosses in the game where you really have to like tank something whereas like with different mechanics and spells it's like you got bandos i guess where you, you either get hit by melee or range but like people just aren't used to doing that but it's something which you can definitely use in your own favor to gain an advantage and actually be able to escape teams. And I, I think that's a really good point you just made there. Yeah, no, um, I agree. Um, I think a lot of people, they the whole bulwark thing, 
Like they they said it was gonna get nerfed, and then everyone's like, "No, I, I can't lose my best." It, it's, it's such a stupid shield. It's Bro, it's it's so it's op. Worst. It's it's ridiculous, and people say like, "Oh, that's what it's meant for," but it's like, well, it's broken, so it shouldn't really be in the game. You know, it's so cheap now, and it is just awful. And I think promoting ma making it so people actually get better than people just stick prey mage on and just hope for the best is such a healthier you know development of of players in the wilderness and i think people can actually learn from it um it's like amenity i think back in the day like a couple of years ago he or actually i'll, I'll talk about bellis um bellis used to just be a pvmer like let's say three or four years ago um and he started watching my streams and then he started peaking himself and over the course of like a year and a bit he's gone from just being a chill pvmer to like i would generally say like one of the best pkers on the game like he, he's become so good uh, and it's just because he's put in the time to to learn it and i think if there's more mechanics in the wilderness that kind of try and enable that learning process it will help a lot more people realize that you know what pks they're actually quite easy to tank like if you have yeah. a little bit of knowledge they're really not that great and you you, you can survive uh, most of the time and you don't need a bulwark yeah i agree i, I really hate the whole victim mentality right because you were talking about if the bosses were tribritable, these people could bring anti PK sets and uh, you know fight at the same time. But really, there's nothing stopping these people that cry and whine on Reddit from doing that now. I think most of the money I make in the wild is anti PKing, and it's you don't really need much Venge, so, AGS hmm. overall. I have a question for Manx. So we we didn't really talk about much about like the dynamic between singles and multi, right? So you know how in the wilderness, it's kind of like random at times when they transition over the zones right and and i've noticed that like people often take advantage of that kind of like ambiguity to trick players and like kind of lure them right so like for example okay two questions right so the first question is like okay what do you think about those kind of lore, like luring group smite kind of things like is that like a healthy part of the wilderness you think like does it promote more people wanting to participate in that kind of thing and also how how does that like how like the multi lines and the single lines right should it be a bit more predictable when things are single and when things are multi because right now in the wilderness is like you can literally just move one random square and boom out of nowhere it's like multi right it's like and you, and there's no real indicator that what you're about to go into is multi you know unless you okay. just memorized it from years of playing or something yeah i was going to say i've pretty much just memorized it from years of playing um is it healthy? Probably not. But I think the wilderness is kind of a place where anything can happen. You know, it's the wilderness. Um, it's it's high risk. Well, it's meant to be high risk, high reward. It's it's really not high reward. Just these high days. risk. <laughs> yeah, it's literally just high risk. Like I always explain to people, risk these days isn't about risking like a hundred k or two hundred k because everyone says, oh, you're killing revs in two hundred k gear. You don't risk anything. No, risk these days is all time. Time is the biggest risk because you don't want to waste 20 minutes of your time, you know, doing whatever. So you go to exactly. the wilderness and you die when you're killing revs or whatever. It's not the fact that you just died in like 400k gear. It's the time you waste when PKs attack you. So you're not attacking the, the revs anymore. It's the time it takes you to re-gear. Uh, yeah, it is time that you that, that the money you do lose as well. But that time is such a huge factor. The rewards are not good enough from revs to make all of that annoying getting attacked by other PKs worthwhile. So if they want to make revs good, like they have to make it a lot better. But sorry, yeah, going back to your single and multi-lines, I think it's 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 all right i think luring people it does take time and you do have to be very patient to actually lure people i know it is it's quite scummy and i mean it i feel like it's mainly for newbie people who can't 1v1 mm -hmm. you know um Definitely. but I, I think i mean yeah sure they, they could make it a lot more obvious where multi-lines are like you could have i don't know wilderness moss on the floor on all the lines between single or multi so you always knew kind of where that that difference was because i guess if you don't peak often you're not gonna have a clue right um yeah. so that could be healthy yeah, for it but exactly. but yeah, yeah. I, I feel like the wilderness i don't know it's kind of like a, a i think it's called it's a lawless land isn't it yeah. where anything yeah. can really happen yeah, uh, yeah. going going to rice's question man because that was a really yeah. good question rice i was i was like yeah. wow i was gonna ask that as well i i actually like if you could 
differentiate against single and multi because some clients already do that and it's definitely a bonus. But what I'm more scared of is macing, right? I don't mind luring, baiting, hell, even skull tricking. It is a lawless land. You should be able to time and, and plan and strategize ways to get kills. But macing is almost like if it was in any other game, that would be patched instantly. We're talking instant smite, instant mace, or sometimes you can spear someone into a corner that jacks them to the wild, which that should be patched. It's been there for years. I'm talking bills have been lost. When Rev Caves came out, when it was multi, I think one clan mace seven bill, right? Two days in? Like, is that healthy for RuneScape, man? Do you think macing should be in the game or or not? Um, okay. I've got I, I've got kind of both sides for this. I think macing does take quite a lot of good communication and skill to an extent because you have to get everyone hitting on the same tick um you have to sim them spear them all on the same tick it is really unfair for solo players because oh, yeah. you know it, it, there's there's literally nothing you can do about it other than nah. sit at like 50 hp while you're pking which obviously is just like kind of really a silly mechanic uh but i think that the skill required to do it kind of it's the reason why it hasn't been patched so far um i personally there's there's small things like small quality of life things that really affect different communities and i think that one it would be hell it would have been healthy a couple of years ago for them just to re remove ancient macing basically because it meant you couldn't go to multi with an ags with your friends you know because you're just like well I, I'm not going to get smited because I'm not silly, but I might get Ancient Mace, so now I can't have to run around a DDS, you know? Um, and then there's another aspect where Singles Plus, um, I don't know if you guys want to talk about Singles Plus, but oh, yes. the whole the whole clan clans in RuneScape in Deep Woody, like, should that be a thing anymore? Is that healthy for it? Personally, I feel like if, if it was Singles Plus everywhere, there still are clans, they still peek in the Rev Caves because they have their, their little ways of getting around it. But it is a lot healthier, I think, to have people just 1v1ing um, without the fear of having 20 people falling in on you um, and, and getting baited low and then just having a 20-man team kill you. Uh, but the only negative of that is, well, then you kill off that aspect of the game because the second you put singles plus in, a lot le uh, people are a lot less likely to actually run around with their friends. And at the end of the day, this yeah. is an MMO, MMO, you know, where we're meant to play with our friends. So I don't know. It's, it's a really difficult situation. And like macing... Again, good communication, timing is required, but then it is really unfair for the solo players. So it is, it's a it's a very difficult um, topic. Uh, but now that they don't have multi revs, I don't think it's much of an issue. Like I don't really see that many people getting maced these days. It does happen, and uh, the coordination isn't really that crazy. Like I thought beforehand when i see people mace I'm like wow that looks skillful i'm like all right let's try that so back in multi revs i grabbed my viewers we got in discord we got an ags and i'm talking i love my viewers but they're fletchers all right they're slippers <laughs> they're people they're people they don't pk so if i can do that with my boys uh you know you can probably get people from lumberage cow pit to join a clan and start macing right it wouldn't take that much skill but we you did bring up single plus and you did bring up multi revs and i just gotta say one, do you think single plus is a good add? Personally, for me, I do like single plus, but adding it to revs and only revs almost seems like a waste. And two, is multi revs necessary for the wilderness to be active again? Because it really seems like single revs is not not that active at all. I'm there all the time. It's it's pretty dead. Okay. Um, I think hmm. multi revs served such a huge purpose for multi peaking and just running around with your friends, just having a good time, like with your viewers as well, just running yeah. around and and just messing about you know um it served such a good purpose should it be that again i feel like it shouldn't because of the issues that they've had with the whole um farming i think what they really need to do is they do need to 100 percent make another area that is active that is multi so you still have that ability to run around around with your friends because that's that's such a huge part, and I used to do that with Pot Up Sun and a, and a bunch of friends. We used to just yeah. run around multi and just have fun, you know? But you can't do that anymore. It's completely dead. I think singles plus is really good for the game. Um, in the rev caves, like, I, I'm happy to run around in rev caves, DHing people in Tribrid at, like, 20 HP, because I know that this guy can't pull off me and someone else is just going to AGS me, you know? I know that I'm locked in with that guy for that fight, and no one else can grief me. And that's such a good feeling. Um, and I think, honestly, 
I'm not joking. If they just made revs like actually decent GP per hour, that could be one of the best updates the Wildey has had is in forever. Because I feel like the the life that would be brought to it if it was good GP would just be so nice. I think a lot more people would actually, you know, risk wasting getting attacked by people and dying to people. They'd risk that time and actually do it. And it also allow if if more people go to it, that means more newbie PKs are going. And then you get people anti PKing. Anti PKing is so much fun as well. Oh, it's but it's best. just it's it's almost impossible to do right now because there's so mm. many few PKs that it's just yeah you spend probably like an hour getting like maybe one chance or two chances at an anti rush and then you get the good pks hunting the good pk uh the, the bad pks you know it's it's that whole ecosystem is lost because the revs are like 500k to 1 mil an hour yeah. and it's, it's ridiculous such, right it's not, yeah it's it's honestly like i love the people that work at jagex but the fact that that kind of stuff gets left for so long and they're analyzing it for so long it's just like Bro, if you went there, you you would realize the potential that this place has, but they just don't do anything about it. They they wait for months and months, and then they bring something out, and we're like, "Yo, can you tweak this?" And it will take months and months again. You know, they need a a faster system. And going back to the council, I think that's a really good way of getting these changes in the game because at the end of the day, everything needs seventy five percent to pass. That means you need twenty five percent or more of the community to be like, nah, I don't like PK and I'm just going to vote no. They don't know what they're voting for, but they're just like, this doesn't affect me, uh, or I don't know much about this topic, I'm just going to vote no. If they had a council that actually knew the positives and negatives, then good updates could come into the game. It wouldn't negatively ruin anyone else's uh, experience. The only negatives of it would be, potentially the devs realise, oh, or the higher up, sorry, it's not the devs, that decide this stuff, the higher ups might realize, oh, you know what, it's actually worth investing time into this because we've done some small changes and oh, it's it's up the popularity a lot. And videos from from you guys and framed and Torvesta, you know, PKing, they get mad views. Like that it is is there's so much lost opportunity in the wilderness, man. It's it's insane and it, it triggers me so much thinking about it. And that's why I want to work at Jagex, because I want to say to the people in charge, like, look, if you do this so many good things will, will come from it and it yeah. can be so positive for the game no yeah. you you hit that right on the head my friend i'm just glad mm -hmm. i'm not alone because i'm starting to feel insane nowadays where i go to revs i'm making 300k an hour right because you got a factory and you're getting attacked you got to run away you got a bank it's not like you're just there the whole hour and it's so bad and i like yeah. to make this reference yeah. that taking away revs, multi-revs, and not adding something that has another multi-spot, because I would like multi-revs back, but really, if they added a place we could have some fun, make money, I'd be okay. But not adding that and taking it away is like, to PVMers, taking away raids and then giving a, a Slayer task, right? No one would want oh, that. I, Everyone would be against it. But May I offer uh, my, my uh, I guess, my outlook on that? So, I remember killing revs, because I... I had to pay a you know a stupid clan to actually be able to kill them because you know all the worlds were locked down to that you one paid? spot. I had you to. Part of the yeah. problem, bro. No, you I didn't have a choice, problem. bro. I had to, bro. You know. But like, see, see, it kind of sucks because I'd rather just go and kill you know kill the stuff. But like, every world was just freaking camped by a whole clan, right? So I noticed there were two problems with it from my from my perspective was the fact that every rev was in one really 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 small area that in any clan could just kind of like monitor the whole time right and and obviously the money that you could get from it potentially if you you know if you were farming it in that you know in, in that controlled environment was like ex exorbitant it was a crazy amount right so i think i think fundamentally those two things together was a problem just because pretty much essentially every world was just farmed like that right so it was very like mechanized and like fact it's like it was like a factory thing you know it's just like pumping in the gp and the resources constantly right so i and, and then jagex obviously they they went a bit too hard in my opinion because not only did they lower the actual gp per hour they also spread it out in, in a fast area right i felt yeah. like maybe only one of those changes had to happen right either you yeah. lower the gp or or you keep the same gp but you spread them out a bit more right yeah and, I, and I, that, I think that would have been better right That's i mean because there, there's so yeah, much they could do and i agree because yeah. um I think if they would have actually just kept 
the revenant drop table the exact same way as it was and then just spreaded the revenants out it would have more or less done the same thing i think you're totally right yeah, they could have just done exactly one. but there <laughs> yeah. there's so many things they could have done like th they could have they could have done something like where if you're inside the rev caves you get like a, a different like you remember the bounty hunter skulls they could have given something like that and it could have been like okay so if a player's got like you know over 10 mil he's got a red skull so it's like you could literally monitor like which people are killing revenants and are worth killing and how much value they have but um i i think that separating the revs in a lot of ways i understand why they did that because it was the whole you know people just gold farming there and also it was getting mm -hmm. locked down but like with how it is right now with all the revenants being scattered across it's like and so I, cheap a clan can't really monitor that as well and i think that if they were to just buff the individual revenant loot table and make it so that gpu was a lot more than what it is right now like i'm talking like double if not triple i i think that would probably on its own bring a little bit more life into there uh and i do agree i think that the nerf was just a, a tad little bit too yeah, harsh fun fundamentally it was two variables that that were you know both very like huge like it was like a multiplication kind of deal right when you have them together all they had to do was really take away one of them and yeah. i think just spreading them out and keeping the loot was probably like perfect because you get rid of the whole like clans locking down the entire world you know 24 7. yeah there's yeah. An another factor in that as well so, so you have um it being multi as well so obviously loads of people can attack the same one so now the revs die even slower as well because it's only one person. It's a 1v1 with a rev right now. So they heal more because they're not dying oh. as fast as well. Yo, so what if... It's, it's, it's awful. What if some of the spots... Like, let's say they buffed... The, you know, they brought back the GP rate. Like, you know, the same drops as before. And then they made some spots multi, you know? Yeah. I think that yeah. would be... I think that'd be okay. Because, because if I remember correctly, right? Like, the caves, it was one spot. And there was, like, maybe 15 mobs. Or something in that one spot, right? They could do like a five mob multi room or something, right? And like a few, one or two scattered singles, you know? Why didn't they? I don't know. I f it feels so obvious. There's I don't so know. many Why things. I, that, dude, Trust, there's a list. You know? I, yeah. I think it was. I think it was primarily to do with like the gold farmers, the Venezuelans, and so forth. Yeah, I mean, it would drastically lower it though if they only. Yeah. Because the, here's the deal: they had like literally fifteen to twenty mobs in one place. All they have to do is bring like five in one place multi, right? Yeah, it would it would, it would be so significantly better. better. And also go into like yeah, them like, analyzing what's, <laughs> what's happening with the game and how much GP's coming in and so forth. Like, I don't know if they haven't picked up on this, but I feel like, you know, just looking at the value of stuff has, it's like when they actually did this to Revs, it didn't fix the problem that was initially set out to be fixed, which was basically stopping the gold farmers. They just then spread over to other pieces of content. They it's just got like really good at PVM. <laughs> Like, they just go and they literally, like, <laughs> tanked the price of uh, Inquisitor. When I started doing the Nightmare, it was, like, 500 mil a piece. And now, I mean, it dropped down to, like, uh, under 200 mil per piece. So what you're saying and, is it didn't solve anything by banning revs. They just kind of went elsewhere and still messed up well, prices. that's why I told yes. I mean, that's yeah. I always told yeah. people, you know. So it wasn't a solution. It was just, it, yeah. it, they just really dampered... Um, the PKing spirit. And I just, for those new yeah. viewers who don't know, because obviously there's probably not a lot of people who do know about the protection clans and revs, what would happen is there'd be a clan on Discord and you'd pay them a certain amount a month or a week and then they would protect you on total worlds or regular worlds and multiple clans did this and anytime anyone not protected would log in, that whole Discord would log in, usually in rags. That was the problem. They were in rags, very cheap gear. They would have resupply gear and they would pile you. Yeah, it was but right now... It was a numbers game. But they made it single plus in revs. They added a dev tax, which I do like, but then they nerfed the price. I was thinking in my brain, what if they just had uh, the dev tax, maybe 200K, and make it multi again, they boost the prices, and there were clans that would literally attack protected worlds and farm those people, right? And they would make a lot of money. But if you add a 200K per kill on each clan mate you kill, and they're in Zerikins, Black D High, these guys fall fast. Then that might actually have uh, that might actually solve some of the problems there because they couldn't yep. just come back right away. But yep. you know, so, just off the top of my head, Max, so I have a, a slightly different question for you because I feel like it's very easy to get stuck on the wilderness and all the issues with it and so forth. So I think that they do need to do updates to the wilderness. But to be totally honest with you, I think 
the if they were to get pvp booming in general not necessarily just inside the wilderness but with other pvp mini games and so forth that it would all lead to the same success of the wilderness becoming more popular so my question to you is if there was one thing that you could add into the game outside of the wildy that was pvp related what would you ask question, man. i am okay um so it can't so it's not in the wilderness i mean i'd probably say dead man dead man um i feel like dead man is not only do you have the whole pvp aspect of hunting people you have the survival aspect which i know a lot of pvmers enjoy as well like i've got quite a few friends that they didn't even try and pk in the in the last uh dead man they literally just went and did raids and stuff because the aim that's me <laughs> yeah the, the fear of getting attacked was exciting uh... when you get a good item it's exciting you know like it, it's really good and i think again i th- I feel like you guys are going to think me and husky have been talking on a down down low like let's hype each other up but um <laughs> a couple of that. years ago i honestly it's like three years ago at one of the demo events uh husky was talking to me about what they could do to make demo mode better and he was suggesting ideas and and we were just talking about it i was like this guy he's got he's got so much potential and he knows like he's going down a really good route for demo mode which is why i'm super excited for the next one if he's because i think he's working on it right so yeah yeah I'm he is. So, yeah i'm so excited to see what he comes up with because in the in the past we've had brief discussions but they've always been so positive and i can see the passion and i can just tell like he's got good potential for dem mode so i'm very excited for that and i i hope yep. that all comes through Dude, well and he's given proper time i'll tell you something he did say in our podcast we did with him that he's worked on something which he's excited for but anxious because he said it's so out of the box it's like nothing we've had before and I was that's like, good. it sounds awesome. I was like, that's that's what yeah. Dead Man Mode needs. Um, so should we uh should we move on and talk about a little bit of mental yeah. health? So to kind of um jump into the subject, I have been feeling obviously the same way. I believe not the same. I can't be in your shoes. And I just saw on Twitter Mika, if you don't know, Mika plays a lot of Who's Dead Man Mode leagues, yeah. non permanent game modes, and he tweeted that after leagues he had no ambition for any content and he didn't feel like editing. He was mentally tired. He was not excited for RuneScape at all. So we're going to kind of jump into the mental fortitude of certain content creators and, and just kind of how they deal with it, man. Yeah. So Mank, how is, how is that affecting you though? Overall, like mentally, where, where are you at right now? Oh, so I really like talking about this because I think as a content creator, it's such a different kind of job that obviously it has so many huge perks of you get to play the game you love, you get to make friends with people who enjoy the same games as you, like everyone's super chill, like the RuneScape community is absolutely amazing. But then I think the negatives that people don't really see, I feel like they're mostly like mental health related because you go live playing the, the, the game you love every day and I think over time it kind of it taxes you to an extent and over time playing the same game all the time uh, you, you end up getting burnt because you play it so much and I was really interested in kind of how you guys deal with playing RuneScape so much and whether you feel burnt and and kind of where you go with all of this because for me um, I was contemplating going full-time Apex um and then i i did my research i had a plan to grow like i i was going to do youtube along with streaming to grow and then i saw their their uh, some tweets from streamers in the apex community and a lot of their tweets were their community is like the casual players are really toxic um and they they're like know it alls and it reminded me of demo mode because when demo mode comes around i have so many clueless people joining my chat and saying why don't you do this why don't you do uh, that yeah. it's like bro please so <laughs> it, 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 it honestly it made me just not want to do it and I thought, runescape community is the best I'll, I'll just i'll stick with runescape and i'm gonna try and do it properly uh, but what yeah. do you guys do when you feel like burnt out or or how do you manage kind of how much you should stream or how much time you should dedicate to YouTube and your own personal time? Like, how do you manage all of that? Should we take turns? Yeah, let's take turns. Uh, Reed, do you want to go first? Yeah, go for it, Reed. Uh, well, okay, so I like to think of 
there's like two ways to approach this, you know, like growth, right? As a as a consecrator, like I've seen enough of kind of like both sides, right? You have kind of like the slow burner growth, and then you have like the rapid exponential growth. But then obviously you can't maintain it forever. So then there's like that big decline kind of deal. So for me uh, personally, I I'm a, I'm like a I'm like the you know slow burner, right? Like I never really had like insane growth, but you know I'm consistent and I just you know kind of just grow steadily. And I think that that helps me a lot in in terms of letting me keep doing what I want to do because because the thing is you don't need that much growth to motivate yourself to you know do things right as long as it's consistent and and you know and you're doing what you believe is good you know good for you your content your viewers and stuff like that then you know eventually right you're gonna get somewhere anyways whereas if you if you kind of like get insane growth like out of nowhere but then obviously you realize that there's going to be that th th there's a drop point coming and then you you start hitting downwards and then like you can't meet that again i feel like that's super demotivating for people and i've noticed that with a lot of people in general is that when they start kind of like crashing a bit it's like it's so hard for them to try to get back up to it you know mm -hmm. which i think it's a lot a lot to do with like the seasonal ideas is that obviously you know when the season hits it's like wow you know everybody's here they're watching me they know i'm good at this you know they know i'm good at that that like you know leagues or whatever but then once obviously it starts dying down right then it's like oh no what i do now you know it's like i need to find something to like maybe reach that level again but it's like you have to wait until like the next event or whatever right so yeah i think i think there's there's definitely a lot of i mean neither method is necessarily correct but like in terms of how i'm not like completely burnt out all the time you know it, it helps to to like just i guess find something that you can do that you like that that you know will still get you growth but obviously we don't need to always set insane standards for our metrics every single time because it's because i, I think the higher you want to go the harder the crash will happen right and, and it affects you it shocks you exponentially more when the crash happens whereas like if i go up like this even if i curve down a little bit it's okay because like i was just there recently you know, it's like whatever. You know, I, I, I it's like I, I, I usually the positives will slowly outweigh like kind of like the you know dips because I've always had these kind of like dips, but it's never been like this. It's always been like you know a little you know gradual kind of thing. So so I think I think that's how I've been able to like kind of just keep doing this. But I mean, you know, I take breaks too. Like some some days, like I you know I don't play as much. I just AFK skill a lot to be honest. You know, some days I just AFK skill all the time. It's like therapeutic, or I watch a show. And another another thing is just talking to friends, you know, like talking to other fellow creators, you know, like on Discord or something, kind of like talk about like, oh, what their plans are and stuff like that, you know, always think of talk about the future series or ideas. And and yeah, if you have someone that can like share that, I you know, your ideas with and like and they're excited for you and you're excited for them, it kind of helps a lot, too. So, yeah, yeah I think those are like kind of like the three things for me. But, yeah. Yes, man. Yeah. I think, um, you know, it's really funny, this conversation, because uh, yeah. <laughs> in, in regards to, like, mental health, like, I mean, yeah. this is a conversation as us us four all do content creation, so I, I don't know how much, like, the general public and audience who will be watching this kind of can relate to this, uh, but something I said to Sarah the other day, every single person who's been in the spotlight is, like, a content creator, it's like, you're just a fucking human. There's people that are good at putting on a show and being like, you know, I really deserve this. I'm the fucking god here. And then there's people that are more humble. And I said to Sarah, I was like, you know, every single person who becomes part of that spotlight and they have their moment of fame for however long, it's like, chances are you have to be realistic. You have to think, will this last forever? Or will it not? And I said to Sarah, I was like, and this is my, my partner, I was just like, look, I was like, at the moment, and this this is a weird thing for me to accept, because I guess you could say I'm just a little too humble, but like when people come to me and they kind of like, they think so much of me because of my content, and they hold me to such a high standard, um, I said to Sarah, I was like, there's people out there that like, look at me like, holy shit, it's Rakesy, like this is, you know, someone that I watch, I really like their content, and then I'm just there like, this is gonna last for who knows how many years, and I go from being idolized to then the next thing i know i'm working in a factory again throwing fucking paper bags into a box and some fucking cunts looking at me like can you hurry up <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> so it's like 
it, it's one of those things. I think it's really difficult to wrap your head around it, but it's like every single content creator, let's be realistic, there's like a time limit to how long you can do this for. Most of the time, unless you're just insanely adaptable and you're going to pull like a Tony RS kind of thing and you're going to be doing this when you're like eight years old, it's something <laughs> that you mentally have to come to term with. And I think it's something that the way that I kind of deal with it is I look at it like this. I'm incredibly grateful for what I have. And I think of it like this. If RuneScape died tomorrow or my YouTube got destroyed or like I just got banned off of everything, I would be like, okay, well, that is shit. I'm going to have to figure out my, my stuff here. But I am so grateful that for the last four and five years, I've been able to play a fucking video game for a living. That is something which I feel like very few people can say. And it's also been amazing. I wouldn't change it if I could continue doing this forever. I would. But I just try to be realistic about it in terms of like trying not to get burnt out. I don't think you should. I, I think when you burn out, you burn out. Okay. Like, mm. luckily for me, I've played this game for such a long time now. I started playing back in the early 2000s. I've burnt out already, dude. I'll burn out in like 2011, 2012, dude. People that are going through their first burnout right now, I'm just like, you're a fucking amateur. I'll burn out years ago and I'm back. It, it's just a case of like, you're gonna burn. I, I, I always say I'm a slow burner, like in the sense of burning out. I feel like I'm on a constant slow burn where I've just became so used to it. But like, for me, the most important thing is having goals. If I don't have a goal in mind, I don't want to log into the game. If I can't log into the game and progress towards whatever my goal is, I won't even want to log in. It, it's like you have to set your own goals. There have to be goal posts that you have to get to and achieve. Um, and also, I feel like in the sense of like actually burning from the game, never force yourself to do something you don't want to. Because people are going to know if you're hating your life when you're doing it, right? It's like if you want to play another game, go and play another game. There's nothing wrong with that, you know? It, it's like, I feel like everything needs to be managed in proportions, and that completely comes down to playing the game for however long, spending time with your family, going out with your missus, you know, going out and just, like, going on an adventure and stuff like that. It's like, you have to moderate what you do, and you can't let it rule your life, okay? You gotta, you gotta find the enjoyment, right? It's like, you know, seek pleasure and avoid pain. It's like, I was say I actually met with one of my friends today. I've not seen since the uh, beginning of COVID. And uh, I was talking to him about this kind of stuff, like with mental health. It was his birthday last weekend. And um, I messaged him. He was on a barbecue. And I was like, bro, I was like, I'm really sorry, man. I was like, I'm feeling super anxious today. I, I, I'm not going to come. But I want to meet up with you next week because I feel really bad and I want to see you. Um, and I spoke to him today. And I was like, look, I was like, where we've been locked down and we've not been able to go out and stuff. I've just kind of got used to that. And I, I said to him that I know that on that day, I was feeling really anxious, and I wasn't really feeling my, like, chir chirpy, happy self. And I said to him, like, I know there's going to be, like, your parents are going to be there. I love your mum the bitch. She's lovely. And, like, all your friends are cool as well. And I was like, but if I come, I knew I was going to be not really my full self. I was going to be a little bit, like, withdrawn. And I think it's just, it's okay. It's like, if you're not feeling great, if you're not feeling okay, that's okay. Like, that's not a bad thing at all. I think everybody deals with stuff differently. Uh, I'm definitely a big advocate for you should do things which push you outside of your comfort zone because I feel like you tend, like, personally, I do stuff that I, I, I've actively done stuff that I've really not wanted to do just because I knew that it was going to help me grow as a person. So a good example of that would be, um, I think it was the last demo mode that happened. I did the casting for it. I couldn't sleep for like three fucking days because of that, because I was so, <laughs> I was shit in my pants. I didn't want to do it. And I knew a month in, in advance when they asked me that I was going to be like that. But because it was such a big fear of mine to like have that pressure, I was just like, I have to do it. I was like, if I don't do it, I'll look back on it and I will regret that. And I'll always think about it, about that opportunity I had that I didn't take because I was getting too nervous. And I, I, I don't know. I think it's like all about balance, man. Like, I, I think yeah. that, I think that's the big thing. Like, I also said to my friend, like, um, we were talking about like finance and stuff. And, uh, cause it's an interesting thing hearing how a content creator makes money because it, it literally is like this. 
it's like you don't just get a paycheck every month. It's like some months you can be up here, some months you can be down there, and it's it's quite a terrifying time. Um, but I said to him, I was like, I've been doing streaming now consistently for like a year, and I said I love streaming. Streaming's so much fun. It's like I get to interact with people, I get to talk to people, I've made a community out of it, we have a good time. And I said to him, but the funny thing is, if I were to stop streaming and I put all of my time into YouTube, I said I would 100% make more money. I was like, in terms of money, if I wanted to make it, I would just do YouTube. Because yeah. like with sponsors now and stuff, which have become quite easily accessible, uh, at least for myself, which I'm very privileged to say, it's like if I wanted to like capitalize the most, that is the route I would go down. But I said to him, why would I do that? This is like one of the first times in a long time where I've genuinely enjoyed the game and my day-to-day -day more because I'm doing something which is fun. And I'm not going to throw that away for money because I'm genuinely enjoying this. And also, I'm making enough to get by anyways. I'm not trying to be like, you know, too greedy about it. Um, but I, I don't know, dude. Like, mental health is such a... It's such an important thing. It's such a big deal. And um, it's hard to really talk about everything all in one go because there's just so much to unpack. But I love I, it's very philosophical. Yeah, it, it definitely is. But... I think it just depends on you as an individual, you know? Like, for me, I need to spend time with my missus. I need to spend time with the boys. And sometimes, I just need to take a day just to fucking sit here and just fucking mong out and do nothing. And then the next day, I'm like, let's do it. Do you know what I mean? It, it's like a day-by-day -day thing. You just gotta, yeah. I don't know, just go with the flow, I guess. I, I feel like just don't put too much on yourself. It's good to set goals, but make them realistic. I, I, I guess that's where I would come with it. I, I'm sorry if that's a bit everywhere, but it is a hard thing to talk about. I, I think it was great, man. I yeah. really liked I, you and Rice. I really liked what you had to say. Um, mental health, like personally, lately for me as a content creator, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but oh, I I've not been, yeah, I've not been <laughs> uploading a lot. I barely stream. So I can't say I have the answers to your question, but I could definitely talk about my viewpoint right now. After leagues, just like Mika's tweet that I read out today, uh, the motivation was burnt. And, you know, I was streaming every day, 12 hours, uploading, and I was happy. I was burnt, but I was happy. But afterwards, I said, hey, I'm going to take a week off. I'm going to do what I, I got to do, and hopefully I'll bounce back. That week turned into a month, and that month turned into two months. And even now, I'm still not full. I'm not back. I'm, I, I made an alt channel called Minty, and I was uploading daily on there, and I even got burnt on, on that channel, sadly. And when I'm in the wild, you know, I, the best thing about the wilderness right now when I'm live on stream is reading my chat, personally, like, in the comments on my YouTube channel. If I didn't get those comments, if I didn't have those people waiting for me, I, I probably wouldn't be here, personally, like, even for RuneScape. Just... <sighs> The way I kind of have been dealing with this, because I'm not over it, and I've not really passed past where I'm at, is, you know, I've been working out, I've tried to walk every day, you know, get that four miles in, I've, I've tried to learn other hobbies, oh, investing, yeah, the running <laughs> shoes, um, but I swear to God, man, when you don't make a video for like a month, and you got these people waiting, you just get so anxious, and... I just don't know how to deal with that. I had to make a schedule to come back to stream, you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then, you know, people always ask about my the favorite series for me. And I, I had to make one up, right? Because the hell's going on in the wild? You know, even as a PvP streamer, you don't have much to do. Could you upload another PK video? Sure. Are you going to be excited about it? Not really. You know, you do it because people want to watch it, not because you want to make it. Really, what I want to do is I want to make it. And I want to be excited about that, but I also want them to watch it. <laughs> and right now I, I yeah. have been struggling so hard mm. with that. So um, like Rakesy said, try to balance your life, uh, get into new hobbies, try something new and um, make content you, you want to make, not because they want to watch it, but because you want to make it. And right now um, I, I don't have the answer, but I, I feel you, man. I'm, I'm struggling with the mental health thing every day. It, it, it sucks, but you know, these guys had to drag me back onto this podcast. <laughs> I'm so glad they did. <laughs> yeah. So glad um, they did. I want to yeah. add one more. I want to add one more thing to like the, you know, the idea of like trying out new things per se is because it's that's that's really, really important. Right. And it really does go with the fact that if you rely on that one thing that you do with this type of job, it's super stressful because especially if 
what you rely on that thing to do is often a spike and then it's like a dip right kind of deal it will it will mess you up pretty bad because then you're kind of like stuck in that one corner you're just stuck on that one way road right whereas Mm -hmm. you know in this type of field you while you know while you're on your highs like you you can't just be like all right you know this is good no it's not it's not good because you need to think about what to do after the high because that's really where the the real problem is going to be right so like you have to think about like okay well what other consistent series i can do on the side or you know other types of activities in the game that i that i might enjoy that i might try out that i'm not familiar with that you could do you know those kind of things you have to like actively think about other venues of things that might interest you you know whether it's in runescape or whether it it might be in a completely different game but yeah you are playing valorant which is good right so that means that naturally your mindset is already in a good direction in the sense that it's good to diversify a bit because you know like life is very complicated and it's it's not i don't think it's it's the best way to just put everything on the line for that one thing you know because you should be able to have something that you care about deeply, but you should also be able to have room to check out other stuff too, you know? Yeah. Because, like, RuneScape is very diverse, so luckily you can, you know, you can always expand more and stuff, but, yeah, Yeah. it's really hard when you put all your eggs in one basket, though, for sure. Like, I I totally simplifies... I simplifies a lot with, like, Manx and basically anyone else that does PvP only, because, like, that's more or less what I did a long time ago, and, um... I kind of came to that conclusion probably five, six years ago that it was, it was going to be an unrealistic, like, path to pursue in terms of content creation, just because, like, it just seemed so limited, and pretty much it all felt like recycled content. It's like, you can only do so many, oh, rushing with Dragon Claws to g more and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And also, I, I think something which is uh, really healthy as well is, like, Obviously, you got a balance being realistic with finances and making enough money to survive. And at the same time, like doing stuff that you want to do. So what I typically do is I will play RuneScape like during my stream hours. And then at the end of my stream, I'll play another game that I really like or something else, which is like it refreshes me or um, I'll end my stream. And in the evening, I'll play that game, like whichever way I go with it. Um. But yeah, I think it's uh, it, it's very easy to get burnt out when you go all in. And I think I, I think about this stuff all the time, dude. I'll be making my morning coffee, and I'm getting ready to go and stream. And I know that I'm gonna go play RuneScape for the next like six hours on stream. And I'm just there making my coffee, thinking about killing Corp for the next four hours. And then I'm thinking oh. about people who I know are like that they're, they're aspiring content creators. And I'm just there, like you know fucking swirling my my teaspoon around in my coffee and i'm thinking <laughs> they don't know what they're getting into <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what they're signing up for man dark path I, man like do, do you know they say they sometimes say it's not a good idea to make your hobby into your full-time uh full-time work uh and that's i i feel like that's very realistic it's, it's like there there does come a point where you will end up playing something which you once loved as a hobby and you'll be playing it when you're not in the mood because you need that yeah. finance. And um, it, it's a hard thing to figure out. I, I guess you just, you got to be relentless. Like, if you really want to make it long term, I think that you can't stop. Like, you have to keep pushing. And hopefully by the time that you get to a position where you're financially okay, hopefully you've not, your love for the game hasn't, you know, diminished. Hopefully that's the case. Um but I think ultimately, like it's all about balance, man. And you should never mm. force yourself mm. to do something that you don't want to. A hundred percent. Like I don't really do PvP in RuneScape because I don't really enjoy it anymore because it's just the same. Yeah. I want something new, so I play other games for PvP. Like that's my fix. And it's kind of like you, man. Like you're playing Apex Legends, you're playing Valorant. It's like you're doing a similar thing. And if I were you, if I was in your position, and it's obviously completely up to you. I would try to find something in the game that you love and enjoy outside of PvP. If you can find that, you will actually be consistent with your content. Like, I, I, I think if you can find that thing. Like, for me, Yo. I went from being on... Dude, I can tell you the exact time I was in a PK team, and 
they were DMing me. They're like, bro, where are you? Why aren't you at the PK trip? It's mandatory. And I was just killing fucking Abbey demons. And I was having more fun killing Abbey demons than I was being in the fucking Ventrilo with them. Uh, and that was the point for me where I was like, I'm going to make the switch. I'm going to I'm gonna try something else. So, yeah. Yo, That's Mint likes yeah. skilling, dude. <laughs> I like leads. I do not like skilling. <laughs> oh, yeah, There's ahead. a difference, kind of. Uh, but, Mate, how, how about you, man? Do you have any uh, secret tips for Reflex- mental health? Reflections on our uh, what we've said, I guess, too. Well, Monologues. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, so my streaming career has been very strange i'd say i've not been like a oh, hard worker gained views because of that and you know being super consistent and then got views yeah. like that i had a very different start where i i basically i mean i high risk for and i got viewers but i didn't really make a proper community and then demo came around got loads of viewers for that and i don't know i kind of always felt like i never deserved it because i didn't do anything special or anything like that before and- right Sorry, what? like beforehand, like you didn't build yeah. up to that point yet. It's yeah, like yeah like... exactly. Isn't yeah, there a word know, for man. that, like imposter syndrome a... or something? Yeah, Personally, yeah, it's a bit of that. Yeah. Anyone who streams yeah. Deadman mode deserves it. That's my point. Sorry, <laughs> continue. But, but yeah, no, I, I kind of, it was always really weird to me because I just didn't know how to feel about how I was doing streaming wise. I never knew what to do. Like the second I wasn't peaking on dead mode, I didn't want to stream like training on dead mode or any other normal content i guess on runescape because i was always fearful like oh no i'm not gonna get these thousands of viewers and yep. it just comp- it just completely messed up my head with being realistic and it's taken me literally probably about f- four years since i began to like I kind of reset my head because the last couple of months i've been streaming apex um and i was enjoying it so much and i was on like 30 viewers and to me, I was like, oh my god, I can't wait to get like 40 viewers or 50 viewers. And yeah, I feel like then, yeah, I was I was starting mm. to actually fully appreciate um the grind, you know? So yeah. so now I've yeah. I, I've said to myself, okay, I've got a year. Um, because I'm I'm getting old, right? I'm I'm 28 in four days. And hey. um <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, not not content creator wise, but yeah. but yeah, now nah, I've, I've realized like I'm I'm getting to the point in life where like yeah. my girlfriend's probably gonna want to start a family and all that in the near future, so I kind of need to get my stuff together, you know. So I'm giving myself like a year, yeah. yeah. But I, I'm I'm getting myself together. I've got a year to do it, uh, and I'm just gonna go all out RuneScape, and I'm gonna do stuff I enjoy, so PvP. But I'm gonna try put twists on it and. I think over the last couple of years, I've realized I'm not a guy that can sit down and talk nonstop for six hours. Because after like three hours, I'd say like three, four hours, that's when I get burnt. And I'm just, I've become a zombie. I'm just, I'm boring. You know, it's just not a good time. <laughs> so, so it's what I'm, very relatable. What, <laughs> <laughs> so I've learned from that. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> this might not be good for my growth because obviously longer streams are so much better for growing your channel. But that's just not me. I just can't do that. So I'm going to do what's best for my mental health and for my streams. And I'm just going to do two different streams. So mm-hmm. now I've got a schedule where it might not work. Who knows? I'm going to test out over the next couple of months. But I, I do two different streams. Um, and I only stream four days. Um, and I, I've realized how big kind of YouTube is for growing on Twitch. Uh, yeah. and I watched like Devin Nash. I don't know if you watch him, but he's, 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 he talks about these things and it's like Twitch for discoverability. You, you just, you don't get discovered. If you're, if you're anywhere below, like, let's say 50 viewers, maybe even a hundred viewers, the odds of new people clicking on your stream are so low. Whereas if you spend a day of the week investing your time into YouTube, the potential for discoverability is so huge on YouTube. Like you're so much more worthwhile doing that than spent doing like uh, 12 hour streams every day. Like your growth will be so much better doing YouTube with Twitch. And I like, I that's, that's why I was going to do that with apex, but then I thought, I can do that with RuneScape. Like, I still love RuneScape. I'm still playing RuneScape every day off stream. Like, I I can, I feel like I can commit to it. And the four to one split of Twitch and YouTube, I think is really healthy for me as well. And the split of streams as well. So yeah, it's taken me quite a while, I think, to realize that. And again, it's not the best for growth because 
I'm having that gap in between streams, but it, it should work. And consistency is key, right? Like yes. consistency is the best thing you can have as a yes. content creator. Even if, even if you're not live streaming that often, as long as you're consistent with that, you know, to an extent, like that's better than going ham for a month with 12 hour streams every day. And then being like, Oh, I'm burned, dude. Yeah, I can't. I yeah. can't do this for another. I, I've got to stop for a writing my story right now. Yeah, I have. <laughs> yeah. I have. I have a pretty pretty good um thing to add on to that. The quality versus quantity of streams. So I used to do like, I used to stream almost like as you know as many days as I could, but I realized that there's there's a problem with that because uh emotionally, it it would spread you thin, right? So I've realized over the years that it's actually kind of better to just do like five streams a week because in those five streams, I am way more energetic than I, than I am overall in like the seven streams, seven day streams, right? And it's just so much better, you know? Because then yeah. it also gives you more time to think about other things in your life. Agreed, agreed. Yeah, so, it's, so yeah, it's definitely nice some so, things off are really good. Mm -hmm. It's nice not to be so fixated. Dude, I'll tell you something, man. I had a, a day last week. I had a real fucking yeah. bummer day, okay? Uh, I had a stream. Um, I, I really try not to look at my view count because it just, it horrifies me. It depresses yeah. me. So I had a day when I had low viewers and uh, I was doing I was doing Corrupted Gauntlet and I don't know if you've done that, but it's, like, it's pretty intense. So it's kind of hard to like engage too much with the chat. So I wasn't talking very much and I just kind of sat there inside of myself and I was having a horrible fucking day, bro. I'm not going to lie. I was super stressed because of some IRL stuff going on. And it was just a really bad day. And I kept looking at my viewer account. And every time I saw it, I was just like getting more and more fucking sad. And um, oh, yeah. I, I just started looking at my chat. And I started talking with the boys. And I, I, I do this all the time. I just pulled my chat straight over my view count so I couldn't even see it. And just started talking to my chat. And I didn't look at it again. And the rest of my stream was probably one of my favorite I had. And um, something I get asked a lot, and by no means am I a fucking expert, and obviously I haven't found my place on Twitch yet either, but like when people say to me, when you stream, what's something you would focus on the most when it comes to like views and stuff? Because people get really messed up with numbers, you know? It's, it's a hard thing shit. to get your head around. And I, I see it like this. Instead of being on your stream and being annoyed, frustrated, or worried, about the people that aren't watching you, focus on the people who are, you know? It's like, spend your time with those people and try and forge like a fucking awesome conversation or a community with those people. And I can guarantee that even if you don't have as much numbers as like some of the big boys, it's like your stream is gonna feel so fulfilling, you know? And it's gonna yeah. make you feel good. And yeah. I think that when you do that, I feel like it kind of builds a more wholesome and more real community. That like I would rather have a small view count with a really close community of people that I just love talking to than having hundreds, if not thousands, of people that I just don't know. And it's like I I, I don't know, bro. Like I just like that. There's something about it which is kind of wholesome. And I, I definitely feel like just focusing on what you have and the people that are there is definitely a good outlook on it. I I think that being obsessed with numbers, it's not healthy, bro. And I was yeah, like that. Yo, I was like that on YouTube not. for a long time. It really messed yo, with my bro. head. You know, you know the streaming thing with the viewer count stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, I, I mean, I, I thought I thought everybody here kind of just already did that stuff. But like, I remember when I started the first year or two of doing it. Like, I turned that I turned that shit off. Like the viewer <laughs> yeah. number because because that shit would bug you out so much. Like the moment chat's kind of like quiet, you're like. Look at your, you know, your viewer count. You're like, well, they just drop five real quick. You know, I'm just like, bro, <laughs> fuck that shit, dude. I turned that shit off. Mental man I crossed it off real fast. After, after that, though, it was so much better because I was, I was, I was distracted by the wrong things. You know, like what I should have really focused on is is more about learning about other people. You know, in the stream because that it was way more interesting than anything else. Really, the numbers is honestly. Like, I'm not going to say it's not important, but it's like, it's so mi minor compared to like what I can learn from other people. What I found way more interesting is that I should just learn about other people's lives and like what they do or like even how, how they're enjoying the game, how, what their goals are. It does, you know what I mean? Anything. Because, because living 
like you know what I mean? Because you know how people want you to live your life. You know what I mean? Like of RuneScape, right? Because like, damn, you can play a lot of RuneScape, but they don't have the willpower, or whatever, don't have the time, and they like to watch you so they can experience what it's like, right? But for me, why can't I do the same thing, right? Like, like fuck it, forget the numbers because you have so many people here that is watching you, and they're probably down to talk to you, so you can live their lives too in a way right so i like i'm mm -hmm. so interested in like getting to know my viewers what they do and stuff because it's so fascinating you know like i, I remember like last week we were talking about like there was a bunch of people that apparently did like a lot of like um uh what, what's that what's it's like a it's like a Warding. job where you like welding it was like a welding it was like a welding job right it's like one guy was talking about his welding job and I was like, yo, that's so cool. Like, so what exactly you do? And then there was a bunch of people like, yeah, I do that too. You know, I'm like, whoa, that's so cool. You know, and then, and then I learned about all this stuff. I was like, damn, that's so, that's actually a cool job. But then they're like, nah, actually don't do it. You'll live a short life. And I was like, oh, but like, <laughs> dang. I mean, I'm not going to do it, Christ. but it's okay because I'm learning, I'm learning your job. I'm learning the job through you. I can like, I'm visualizing the job. I'm like, man, I'm never going to do this job. But like, it's cool to know that it's, it's a good paying job and it's interesting, but it's deadly. You know, it's like sick, you know, I just learned that. And, and it doesn't, it, I mean, it doesn't really matter, I guess, practically speaking, but like, it's so, it just makes it so interesting, you know, it makes it worth, worth doing that job because you get to, life is short, right? So you want to experience as many things as possible. And the best way to do it, I feel like is through people, through their stories, right? So I, I find that so much more interesting and it motivates me way more nowadays to, to stream because it's like, I'm not there to necessarily go to numbers. I feel like the numbers just come from the fact that you're so interested in other people, you know? Yeah. Like they kinda they kinda go together. So I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I've noticed that like I've I've like been way better at streaming in general, you know, since since I've realized that like I should be living other people's lives through them, you know? As well as they live through me, right? It's like Yeah. You know, it's it's a win win. So yeah. You can learn yeah, a lot from I, people, hundred percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Completely agree. Just one last thing to add on, and then maybe we should jump into some yeah. dead man mode, bro. I'm super excited to talk about that. Mm -hmm. First, Manked, anytime you want to slap some cheeks with me, man, let me know. Because I'm not PK of Rakesy no more. He don't split. I'm done with that. <laughs> I split. What do you mean? <laughs> you don't split, man. You're trash. And second thing, <laughs> if you guys didn't bring up Hide in the View, yeah, I would have. Because uh, big fan of Mr. Mammal. I watch him a lot. You know, shout outs. And he said, hey, I, I don't look at the view count. And ever since I, I heard I him say that... Him. I haven't either, and it's been a way better time. Way better time. You just are not focused on it. You can focus on what matters. Exactly what Racy and, and Rice Cup said, man. So uh, you can look you at the analytics it, after, though. You can look at the analytics. I don't after. even look at those now. This is just to kind of like done. sometimes, like you know, I feel like there's a there's a spot in my stream where I feel like you know maybe like because like I'm really I'm really interested in how I can better communicate with people. So sometimes I feel like. This situation, I felt like I was off my game, you know, like I didn't handle it the best way that I could. How could I maximize this interaction? So sometimes I'll look back, right? And if, if they correlate, then I'll look back and I'll see, how, you know, what was the situation like? But like, yeah, it's, it's okay to look at it when you're clear minded, right? After the fact, when you're not distracted by all these things, because it's so hard to look at the numbers when you're like see, already anxious, you know, I you're agree, trying to multitask. But I used, I used to be so. really, um, I mean, don't overdo it. Numbers, though. and don't then now I got infatuated yeah. with the, like the stream analytics, and now I just don't yeah, look yeah, at yeah, it at yeah. all. Because yeah, just I guess... check it from time to time. If anything, you don't need to do it like every stream. Yeah, you know? it's just good to kind of like because like, at the end of the day, you are still trying to grow, right? So you you know you kind of do need to see that kind of you know like the success or or like you know your strategy. You know, there, there's got to be some strategy to it, right? Like, believe it or not, yeah. even if you hide the viewer count necessarily. So also yeah. like. As the famous a cold one once said, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I love that saying. And yeah. uh, he said it, and I was like, I knew it was an actual saying. I always get weird looks when I say that. But, um, what the fuck, right. Man? So, you're going to say it confidently. When it comes <laughs> like, to. Eh. No, no, I'm just trying to think about what I'm going to say. So, when it comes to streaming yeah. and doing YouTube as well, it's very, very difficult to get like that balance right. And,. Like I said, there's more than one way to skin a cat. It's like you can focus all your time and effort into YouTube. You can focus all your time into streaming. To pull them both off is difficult. It really is. Mm -hmm. um, what I've done in the past, which has more or less worked for me, is that I would spend like chunks of time where I'd be like, okay, so for the next three months, I'm going to work solely on YouTube. 
and then I'll go back to streaming. And I haven't done that so much through the lockdown because streaming's been just so nice and good for me, like for mental health. And also at this point, I don't think I can stop streaming because I'm going to feel awful if I do because I love my community. I'm going to feel like yeah, I'm abandoning like them. I can't fucking do that. Too much water's it under hurts. the bridge. The herd's there. I can't. I can't leave them. But um, what you could do is you could definitely just like designate some time specifically to grow that YouTube. Like maybe spend like a few weeks, if not like a month or even more. Get it popping because like even if you get like a few hundred new subscribers, which is a lot. A lot of people, but it's like you can very easily forge a community on your Twitch by bringing them over from your YouTube. It's like I have God like over thirty thousand followers on Twitch, and like all of those, no word of a lie, just came from my YouTube. Like when I used to just do YouTube full time and then stream like once every two weeks, and then I'd get like hundreds of followers that day, and I could just go back straight onto YouTube. So it's like there's different ways of doing it, but. I, I think mm. that YouTube, like you said, should not be underrated. YouTube, you can say what you like about it, but it is a great place for uh, discover discoverability. Like, it, it's fantastic. And I completely agree with Twitch, like, not being a good place to be discovered. Do you know what's interesting, though? I recently took a survey that was sent to me from Twitch about discoverability, and I was just like, it's terrible. I was like one star I was, and I was like this is why I was like I should be I should be streaming on YouTube I'm like I'm an actual imbecile for being on your website because my entire community is on YouTube and you know what's funny as soon as I filled that survey out the next week there was like some thing in my chat where it was like a beta where partners could be boosted to the front page of Twitch and I just oh, randomly yeah. like I, I got put on there for like one day I was like okay well that's cool I guess but I hadn't had that since but I, I'm just saying, like, it's definitely worth trying to get that YouTube active. Yeah, they kind of stopped it because the boost thing was work was going on for like a month, and then they kind of canceled it. Yeah, I, I haven't seen it since. I don't know if it really yeah. worked, but I, I would say definitely yeah. take advantage of your your social medias, but not Twitter. Don't don't take advantage of that one, dude. It's dead dead content. Anyways, yeah. shall we move into some uh, DMM? We have the champion of Dead Man Mode himself. It would be rude not to bring it up. Where did Rice just go? He's, man, it's, he, he don't care about this subject, man. He gone. <laughs> um, so, Minked, for Dead Man Mode, I think maybe let's start out with the negatives. Of course, if you have anything negative to say about Dead Man Mode, what would that be? I mean, there, there's... So, the problem with Dead Mode for me is how scared, I guess, Jagex as a whole have been to changing it. I think from the very beginning, like the first ever one, you would die, you'd lose 28 items from your bank, you'd lose everything on you. Like That was crazy. It yeah. was insane. And you know I what? I loved it though. Oh my yeah. god. Dude, people would still log, well, they'd just go rebuild and they'd do it again. Like, the, the game was so fresh and so new, it was so exciting that people, even though there was such harsh mechanics... They just did it again, and it was because it was unique, it was different to what we'd experienced before, and I think they, they've they had, like, what, let's say, 15 seasons or something now, and tournaments. They just needed every tournament just to go a little bit crazy. Like, it's unpolled content, it's... They, they could just mess around with it because it was every three months and just go crazy. Introduce Karasi Sword. See how that goes, you know? They could just test different PvP changes in that. And it, it, would, it could have been so good because if you look at the views that people get, um, like I think last demo mode, Odeblock was on like 20,000 views, viewers, live viewers at one point. Like... It's so good for the game in terms of exposure because their whole marketing strategy is we want to appeal to the people who used to play RuneScape that don't know it's back and they want to say like, hey, look, we're still around. The game you used to play is still thriving. Come back to us. It's such a good um, marketing technique for that. But yeah, going back to the, to the demo, um, they just needed to be crazy with it, I think. Uh, I really dislike the unhealthy hours. I think... It's fun to grind, but at the same time, when you have people literally just abusing like Team Viewer or whatever the new uh, screen sharing software is, I think that hits a problem. Um, and they, they need to have some form of way to like address that. 
Um, I, I think the best, one of the best ideas, and again, they've had so many suggestions given to them by the community. They kind of just needed to act on them. But one suggestion could be for the seasonal, you, you have fun on it. You do all your stats and all of that. And then they transferred your stats that you got in the seasonal over to the tournament. So then the, the one week tournament was literally just about gear. I think that would be so much more healthy because then the, the, the common guy doesn't have to get max stats and max gear. They, they actually have a chance to compete in the tournament. And it would mean the, the one week tournament would be more about like fighting other people for areas. And it, it'd be more of a, a fun experience rather than going from one to 99 in loads of different combat stats, you know? And I think seasonal would be good because I mean, if you have swapping, it'd be it'd be good for those guys. It you'd get the <clears throat> the new economy, the the race to first like eighty five slayer or whatever. You know, I, I think there's so much they could have done with it. Um, but yeah, my my biggest problem with it is the the health thing. I think also, uh, just my last point for it, a lot of people gave them like flack for like the demo tournaments always going awfully. Uh, but in reality, there were so many tournaments that were fine, that were smooth. And I feel like people always kind of exaggerated how how bad some of the tournaments were. Like there'd be a technical issue. Like some of them, yeah, for sure that they in were the like bad. The yeah, like the Alcarid, awful. That was yeah. Fucked, but, dude. I'm glad I didn't play. <laughs> but but <laughs> yeah, but towards fucked. towards the end, there were like two or three. Just before they got rid of it, I think a while ago, there were like two or three tournaments in a row. That were fine, like they they were good. I th and uh, I think like the the one just before those two or three had everyone logging out, or whatever. And then everyone just remembered that they didn't remember the last two three tournaments that were actually really good. Yeah, um, dude, negative stuff that people yeah. uh, remember the most. Yeah. I just yeah. had a, I just had an idea that came to me regarding uh, you know unhealthy hours and stuff. So what if they were to implement some form of um, like rested XP? So similar to like in World of Warcraft, it's like if you log out a WoW, if you're logged out for ages, you get rested XP where you get bonus XP. What if they did something like that for mm. Dead Man Mode? Where it was like, so if you played eight hours, but somebody played 16, the next day, sure, they would be ahead of you, but you would have rested XP for the hours you were logged out, where you can gain even more XP to a certain point to catch up. They kind of yeah. have Maybe that not already like fully with the, catch um, up, but. No, no, like yeah, not 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 completely, weeks. but like not like a one to one, you know, let, like let, maybe let, a one of yeah. five. Let, let's say the person that plays for sixteen hours gets five million strength XP. The person that plays for eight hours gets like a million and a half, and then that rested XP in that time the player's been off, he'll be able to get up to like four million XP, like pretty fast. So he'll still be a mill behind. The person who put more in will get more out of it. Yeah, because I think it you will should... be catch. You'll be able yeah. to catch up mm -hmm. effectively. You don't have to play sixteen hours a day. Yeah, they yeah. kind of um, have that already implemented, but the thing is, it doesn't work 100% because it's like at two weeks after seasonals, if you make an account, then you get XP and you get protection. But at that point, the game mode's dead. So yeah. I would like them to, to maybe put something something in there. But on Deadman mode, I just don't want to forget. I love making this point. Mank, I, I got to get your opinion on this, man. So comparing it to regular RuneScape, you can use the Vesta Longsword on, I think, two worlds in regular RuneScape, completely dead. But in Dead Man mode, you can use it on every world day one, slapping people in Blue Dehyde. I love it, but they also banned the Bulwark from Dead Man mode. But in regular RuneScape, you can use it on every world. Dude, so we need to do like a whole Jagex. podcast about the Bulwark, man. I swear. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm getting it out, bro. Mints, Arch. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> bro, it's like Jagex knows the Bulwark is bad for PvP. And they understand the Vesta Longsword, but yeah, it's like. They're trolling. Yeah. They do, I don't know. What Do you have an opinion on that, man? Um, I mean, I don't know. I can't remember it. I think the mods basically asked a bunch of people, like, do you think this should be in dead mode because we're bringing raids into it? Do you think they should be in it? And and obviously people are just like, no. I think with the normal game, because it is genuinely just an item that has been in the game for a while now, I don't think they can really disable it because the whole concept of the shield was, oh, if you're the tank, then you use this shield and you can tank monsters for your team, right? 
But in reality, in PVM, no, no yeah. one does that. It's all everyone's just DPS gear because who wants to sit there just like, all right, boys, you do the work. I'll just sit here, I guess, and do nothing. You know, no one wants to do that. So yeah. if they if they got rid of it in PvP, like it'd be really dead content. If they rebalance it and literally give it like no troll minus two hundred mage or something, and then it can have its its melee and its range buffs, then yeah, it makes it a bit more balanced. It's just it's not a balanced shield, which is the big problem yeah. with it. Yeah, definitely. And I don't want to get roasted, so we'll go back to dead man mode. I just like bringing up that point. And obviously, I just got to say, I, Bulwark should not be in dead man mode. Hundred percent shouldn't. Dude, ha- just yo, like min. that point. How would you feel if they just made it so the bulwark was one of those items where you just guaranteed to lose it on death, but they left it as wow. it is? Dude, that and like the cannon in the wilderness would make it so much better. Oh my god! But let's jump into dead man mode though. I we talk about the bulwark enough. Um, so we talked about the negatives of dead man mode. Uh, what would be some things you'd like them to do for the next season or tournament? Just, I just want them to make it completely new completely crazy uh i love the concept of having relics and this may not necessarily be relics to change up the combat but just make it easier for people to rebuild for people to catch up if they haven't been uh playing you know as consistently as other people i just think there's so much potential with demo mode and the viewership that it got that it's such a wasted opportunity to not you know try different things and I think with Husky on board doing those ideas, when he says he's excited but nervous, I think that's a really positive thing. That that sounds to me like he's got a crazy idea that he's not sure whether the community will like it or not, but crazy ideas are so much better than saying, yo, guys, we've got season 16 coming out. Enjoy playing it for one week until it dies off because there's yeah. literally nothing new and you've all, already all experienced it and you all know the mechanics and everything, you know? So I much prefer that. I think having like relics yeah would be huge for it um because they do they just change the game like everyone's been playing well a lot of people have been playing runescape for a very long time now we all pretty much get how it works so putting in mechanics that kind of change up your gameplay but make it exciting still is is really good like trailblazers i played that entire thing i got dragon rank i just i enjoyed it so much and bro i had wilderness unlocked i couldn't pk people but it was fun you know like I could stop people from getting my revs. I'll just attack them and they'd run away. It was just fun, man. And yeah. they just I got need to be like Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and, and talking yeah. about the tournaments, even though if they turn out bad or they turn out good, I'm still watching. Like, mm. it's not like a huge. I want to see some people die. It's great content and I hope they continue to do it. Um, and if they do change something, maybe I'll play longer than a week. Especially if they have those relics. That's that's an amazing idea, man. I, I don't actually don't see why they wouldn't put relics in the next MMO. mode. It seems like a hit. Right. I yeah. actually expect them. I don't know what they would be, but I'm I'm gonna play if they're relics. I'm definitely gonna play. Yeah. Just one more point. I remember back in the day there were so many so every demo mode event, um, because I would be playing on stage, I got a chance to actually talk to the mods and give them ideas and stuff. And normally it would always be like oh, we can't do this because of X, Y, Z. But I think they're getting to a position where they've got so many people working on engine who are really good that in the future, they have so many more possibilities. And like, for example, I didn't even think about the clan system for demo mode, but the clan system is actually huge for it. Like yeah. people can actually, like there's so many people that don't PVP, aren't in a clan, that can join a clan and feel like they're part of a team that will make their experience probably a lot better. And then there's also mechanics like the transferring of stats over from a seasonal into a tournament. I think that in itself is such a good reason to play like the entire seasonal, you know? And I, I think they've, they've got so much potential and I'm really hoping that the next couple of years, hopefully in the next year, so we can have it sooner, but they, they show to us like, look, we know we've neglected this for way too long, but look, We've got this, all right? We're going to change it. We're going to make it exciting. It's going to pop off. That's what I'm hoping. Dude, you're yeah. making me excited for Deadman Mode, and I was not excited for Deadman Mode. I was excited <laughs> for League, so thank you. I'm I'm now pumped to see what they might do in the future, man. Yo, Husky's oh. he's a great mod, bro. He mm. makes some good stuff. Yeah, he does. I, I personally didn't know much about him, <clears throat> but when we had him on the podcast, I truly Yo, we all just sat there, like, just listened, 
and that's it. <laughs> that was the yeah. yeah. ah. Uh, uh. <laughs> we had a uh, we had a lot of comments on that podcast where people were just like, "It's so refreshing to see a J mod being so transparent." Because he was just like, you can talk about anything. It was eloquent. He, he, was eloquent. he just he just said, like, if I can't answer it, I don't know the answer. I'll just say that I can or I don't. Uh, but yeah, that was it was a great podcast, man. It really was. Um, yo, Mank, I'm going to buy you Tarkov, by the way, bro. I've already decided. Scissors? Oh my yeah, God. I got scissors. Yeah. Away. No, I'm doing it because I want you to experience <laughs> the game. Because I know for a fact that you're going to want that in RuneScape. Okay, and I've already yeah. decided, bro. I'm getting you the game. What if he likes Tarkov? Podcast. What if he, he likes uh, it so great. much he doesn't play RuneScape again, dude? No, I'm sure. On, bro. I'm sure that won't be the case. But like, Yo, you, know how, you can just hilarious. get inspiration from it, man. You're gonna love it. Yo, we could get like Husky and like freaking Mank Ma together. Just like have like a, you know, I don't know, some like idea sharing podcast. I don't know, <laughs> like a future them one. too. We, we're not even there. Husky could do the intro. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, one of you guys can moderate it or something, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be great. That'd be great, man. Uh, so I, I guess the next thing leading on from Dead Man Mode is do you think the the way Dead Man Mode was and could potentially be, it could be some sort of esport in the future? Um depends what we define by esports. Like I think esports in this day and age is you have team versus team, so you have like a five v five kind of ordeal going on. Um, I don't think it could be like that, but I think it could be a, a huge kind of marketing thing for them, and they mm -hmm. could have uh, different kind of ways of doing it. So you could have a demo tournament where um, you do the, the week tournament, let's just say, and then at the end, you have a multi-stage, and if you die in that multi-stage, you then go to a singles stage, but because you died in the multi-stage, you have to do more fights to progress. They could do things like that, which could be really interesting. Uh, but esports wise, like I, I, I feel like you probably will never have, regarding demo mode at least, you, you won't have like uh, organizations saying <clears throat> like Cloud Nine Manked or whatever, you know, TSM Manked. You know, uh, we, we probably won't have that. I mean, uh, we've got methods. We've yeah, got like, method no, right sure. now. Method are doing an awesome Ether. job. Um, <laughs> method. We yeah. got we got method. <laughs> We got method, method, method. I, I, no, I yeah. feel like that that could be the beginning of something potentially. If there's yeah, other yeah. groups, I mean, even like me and Re were part of a, a group called Crusader Talent, which is now Teropium. So it's like there could yeah, we got that maybe. I was wondering what that <laughs> was. Dude. I'm like, why, why am I seeing all my boys that. with pictures on Twitter? <laughs> um, yeah, talking about esports, I definitely agree that Dead Mode's not esport ready. Definitely not, but. The 5v5, like they had the 1v1, 5v5, 20v20 tournament. I would love to see that at eSport. But talk about dead man mode. What if they took the tournament, top 5, top 10, maybe top 20 people could choose four other people, have little teams, and then they do another dead man mode that could actually be an eSport, right? And then those teams fight each other. They get gear. They supply. Um, and it would be a lot easier to follow. I guess you would have to worry about other teams working together, right? Because that would probably happen with top top team, uh, 10 people. But I don't know, man. Could you see maybe a five-team five, five Deadman Mode eSport in the future like that? I mean, your idea combined with Group Iron Man could work pretty well. Ah, yeah. It could, man. And then, oh, that'd be exciting. Yeah, like I think that would be really... The, the problem for me... I I view anything like if if Jagex want marketing, I feel like we don't have that many PKs that people actively follow. Um, whereas content creators, I think they're the best people for marketing stuff really well. Like for All Stars, I think All Stars was quite good because you had content creators that you knew that you liked or maybe you disliked, so you really wanted to see whether they did well or whether they did badly. You know. And I think if 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 All Stars was just all the top top PKs, I don't think it would have gone as well. So maybe if they did like a demo mode where they had, let's say, twenty teams, five people teams, and they were all content creators, like I'm sure we could probably get a hundred content creators for RuneScape participating in that really potentially. Cool. And and, Ooh, and it was Group Iron Man. Like imagine the hype in the RuneScape category. Like that could be crazy good. And also YouTube, like. Just imagine all the videos that would be produced because of that. They, 
there's so much potential for Dead Man Mode, and I just hope they invest more time into it, I guess, and invest in ideas, you know? Yeah, I love that idea. Rice, you're on my team, and you're farming every God Wars okay. permanently, dude. Okay. All right. You're... All right. You got <laughs> you're it. Gonna, you're going to gear us up, boy. Show me out oh, when man. you win. <laughs> I don't no, know. I think that's a great idea. I think that's a great idea. Because we've, I think we've already established this, right? Like, um, content creators are the best marketing for RuneScape. Yeah, straight up. We're like They've literally the, best marketing. the fucking. We're like the pillars, you know, like straight up. We're the foundation. So yeah, they yeah. can definitely capitalize it on more, you know, on, of that. So honestly, just, I just don't know what their logistics departments like nowadays. Like you know, they could do a lot of stuff for sure with that. Sorry, it's it's crazy to think what the wilderness or what some areas or even PvP worlds, right? Like, that was dead until C Engineers started putting bounties, right? And hard requirement. Now it's active as hell. Where would those areas be without content creators? I don't want to, you know, wank myself off here because uh, I'm definitely not a part, 100% a part of that. But seriously, like, if, if they weren't there, man, I swear to God, we would not have, like, a wild or, like, a PvP world. So... Dead Man Mode could definitely be easy marketing for content creators. I would watch at least, if not be in it. Oh, man. The thing is, I think one of the inherent things that's interesting about watching Dead Man Mode is that when you see somebody kill somebody for a lot of gear, it's like, it's an oof. It's like, oh my god, can you imagine how long it took that guy to get that gear? Like, mm -hmm. that fuck, that's painful to watch. Imagine being in that guy. It's almost, it's almost like going back to, like, the Roman days when they had, like, the Colosseum. And like just watching that barbaric fucking torture happening, and it's a spectacle. It's like, oh my god, can you imagine being that guy that got eaten by the lion? Do you know, like that's a bit barbaric, but it, it's like it's so rough. It's a hard game mode, and uh, I think it does have its potential. And I, I, if I can chip in, I think the biggest downfall of demo mode was a severe lack of updates to it and just recycling it over and over again. Because yeah, and the, doing it too often. Like I so. love Jagex. And I, I'm going to be critical here, but like, I just see that as laziness where they just saw it as like, well, people still like it. We can just pump it out. It's still going to be active. It's still going to get some numbers and advertise for the game. And we don't even have to do anything. We can just copy pasta again. And uh, I, I think now it's kind of sunk in that that's not really going to wash. And hopefully they do do more of it down the line because it does have a great potential. And I feel like we've only really just like touched the surface of it. And there's like we're Crash we're the, the we're at the peak of the iceberg now. There's a whole fucking yeah. load more down at the bottom. So hopefully they really do push it to its limits. It'd be good to see. But Yo, yeah, Rakes, you got me thinking about the Romans, man. They, <laughs> I think we peaked content wise as humans. I think that must have been the best thing to watch. Right? <laughs> yeah. We just yeah. that peaked right there with the Romans, man. Definitely, I, yeah. dude. It's interesting because I actually went to the Colosseum in Rome. I spent I saw the years. pictures. Spent yeah. three years taking land class, and those stories were hype. <laughs> yeah, like those dude. We, Roman we, story days, man. God damn. We, we had a guide that took us around who gave us, like, a guided tour. He was hilarious. It's like, <laughs> if anybody came over to the group and started to, like, eavesdrop, he would, like, yell at them because they were just, like, leeching off of the stuff he was saying. He's like, nah, you gotta pay for this. He was he was barbaric. But um, <laughs> it, was, it was really interesting because he said, like, it was such a spectacle. It was such a grand thing for its time. And like, you'd be a Roman. It's like, you would get invited there. You would go and watch like a bloodbath where it'd be like traitors would be in there. Slaves would be in there. Basically Fires. people, pe people that were below your stature would be in there. Um, and it would, but it basically just be a part of being Roman. And then like the next weekend, you'd get a knock at your door and they'd be like, you need to be at the army base on Monday. Like if you're not there, you're going to be in there basically like that's the consensus there so, so like bro. the, the crazy times fight and like the people below you so like say people who don't give good splits pking would probably be sent to the coliseum is what you're saying maybe or maybe ungrateful people for lovely splits <laughs> would go in there as well did they you know? did they serve food too like would you get like a lamb shank while you're watching people die or i think they used to give out like um yeah i think they did give out food like bread and stuff That'd like be that hard man can you imagine eating and just watching someone else get eaten at the, that must be it oh, but like man, I, I, know. I know i know it's a bit of an off comparison but like they had spectacles in there dude they would flood that coliseum and they would have fucking like battles on ships 
it wasn't just sand pits with lions. Like That's they would, badass, they would literally flood it and have ships in there with people like fighting. Yeah, and people would just be sat around watching that shit. That's the hype of Dead Man Mode. That's what it should be yes. like. It should be like, god damn. That is fucking. You got cool the people on stage, and then all of a sudden they die, and a lion just comes out, and they got a battle there. <laughs> they just like their chair just falls through into a pit of snakes or something. It's over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Snakes yo, they used for them to, they used to like, <laughs> bro. They used to like sell their like sweat oils. People like, oh man, yeah. the hell you googling? The hell you? No, googling, I learned right? that. I learned it in Latin class, dude. <laughs> no right. joke. Like after Anyways. the fights and stuff, they have like. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, that's pretty gross. We've Which been going now. Sorry. Sorry, I know. Sorry. History's interesting, man. We've been Yo, going we're for at one, one hour and 50 minutes. One hour and right. 50 minutes. Uh, Mank, is there anything else that you would like to discuss? Any other subjects? Anything PvP related? Or have we wrapped it up? What What's one thing that you guys would add to, to the. What, what would make you guys PvP more in the wilderness or PvP worlds? Like, what's one thing that you'd have as an addition? Uh, escape from wilderness. I'm not going to say it again because I've said it in the last two podcasts. Oh, sorry. But basically, Escape from Tarkov with a RuneScape twist. And it would be a mini game outside of the Wildy where people don't lose I'd their items, but they lose time. I would love that, which is why I'm going to buy you the game so you can play it and you can make up your own mind if it'd be good or not. That's mine. Okay. I, I love Tom's hey, idea. I agree. I agree with Rex. Yes. I'll do it. I'll play I that. love that idea. That. Yeah. <laughs> I would play it every day. Um, my own personal ideas, though, I guess uh, starting off with PvP worlds, because I'm not a PvP world guy, it almost seems like it's just another place to PK in your bank. I would like there to be more of um, a reason for you to go farm and do regular things on PvP worlds, right? And kind of get that hunter mentality where if you're hunted, but you're getting a lot of loot, say you have to have some sort of risk or maybe some cash on you, or maybe if you die in a PvP world, just like Rev Caves, you lose a certain amount of money. Right, so you're not just getting that free XP, free money. You gotta, you gotta um, bait it out. Maybe there could be a 10 second uh, logout timer, like demo mode, so you don't have to have TB to PK everywhere, because that's kind of annoying. Something like that, right? So it, it's worth to chase someone. It's worth to be on that world to farm. Uh, wilderness wise, I would love to see multi revs back, or like you said, the dream would be to get some of those. Um, monsters in the wild where you would have to try bread or something skillful and anti PKing. I either one I'd be happy, but just something. Just something, man. Mm-hmm. Also, that idea could totally be implemented into my idea as like a raid boss inside of Escape love from it. the Wilderness. A hundred percent. Yo Manx, it's idea. been an absolute pleasure having you on, buddy. I really look forward to seeing you at the top of the pillar on the RuneScape Twitch category sometime soon, hopefully with the PvP coming back out. Uh, where can the people find you? People need to check you out. What's your YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, uh, OnlyFans, whatever you got, man. I'll just shout out my Twitch and my YouTube. So Twitch is twitch.tv forward slash manked, and my YouTube is t- uh, youtube.com forward slash manked up mage. Links my in dude. the description. Yeah, come on out, boys. <laughs>